Let's take a look at the shape tool here. I've got a blank document called shape sampler and I'm going to use the rectangle tool. Although there is a rounded rectangle tool, you can round off corners very easily using one of the buttons that's on the shapes. Here's a rectangle that is telling me when it's actually a perfect square. So you don't always have to hold down shift to get it if you want to use the hint that's there. Now these are the anchor points that make up these lines. And here is a button that when you use the direct select, well, even in the middle of the shape, you can drag it in to round off those corners. I'm using the V shortcut for the selection tool because we use it so much to click away and see what it actually looks like. We can come back over here and if we use the direct select tool, you can actually click, let go, and then click and drag a single corner. So it doesn't have to be all of the corners at once. So you can do some pretty interesting things once you start off with a shape to adjust it later. Let's take a look at some other shapes. We have the polygon tool. And this one, if you click and drag, it will have the number of sides that you had last time. And as you can see here, it has a lot of sides. So let me undo, click once, and change my number of sides to six so it looks like what you have the first time you use it. Now here is the rounding off tool. And there's also a button right here that will create fewer sides. So you can get down to a triangle. Or you can go down and add more sides. So you can decide after the fact just how many sides you want it to have and how much you wanted them rounded off gets down to almost a circle. So let's take a look at some other things here. If you've got points on a line, these anchors, but you wanted to move things in the middle of one of these lines or curves, we have the pen tool. Now the pen tool is great for drawing curved shapes. It can take a while to get the hang of it. But if you close it in by clicking on that first anchor, you now have a fillable shape. But if we wanted to move something that doesn't have an anchor point right there, we can actually use the pen tool to add an anchor point. So if I wanted to have some little ears or something on this, I can add some anchor points, go back to my direct select tool. Remember, you have to click and then click and drag in some instances. So I can add two little ears to this shape. Let me go ahead and take those off for just a moment because I also want to show you the star tool. Now, the star tool here works very much like the polygon in that it'll have a default number of points on it. When you're holding down the shift, it'll actually lock it into one orientation. Let me undo that because I'm going to click and choose, let's say, a nine-pointed star instead. And then you can expand the size holding down shift if you want to scale it up or down or move it around. So let's take a look at some more things that you can do with these shapes. I'm going to take this shape right here and I'm going to go to some effects and concentrate on the distort and transform. The pucker and bloat is a lot of fun to play with. What it does is brings up a slider that you want to turn on the preview for. And if you bring it to the left into the pucker area, you'll see that it changes the shape of those anchor points so that they go out very pointy. Looks like a splat. And if you go in the other direction, it does a rounded version of that, which has little flower petal looking ones. Let me go ahead and add some color to these, making it a little easier to see. So if I make that one red, and then use the V tool to select this one, I'll pick a couple of other colors. There's an orange, some cream, and how about a blue? Okay, so let's take a look at this one. Um, this one is more regular. So when we go to the effect, distort and transform, form, and then pucker and bloat, it'll make a very regular looking splat. Now because it was a polygon, it's actually got some interesting little points here that come up from those anchors. If we go to bloat, it also does the same thing. If you want to remove some of those pathway anchors, 
you can still do that. You can see the path is still there, but this is an effect that's been applied to it. So we can go down to the pen tool and use the delete anchor point, and I can take some of these out and change the shape of the flower petals, getting rid of one of each of those. And of course, they can be moved and click and drag, and you can make some odd shaped ones. Just like that. Take a look at this one and see what that will do. V is a selection tool. And I'm going to go to effect again. So this, instead of a polygon, is a star. And let's use the pucker and float here and see what happens to it. It looks more like a twinkling star or a double petaled leaf where all of them are the same size. Let's work on this blue one. We've got another effect here. And let me show you another place where you can get to those effects. The Appearance button will show you a, like a mini recipe of what went into creating this shape. If I select this one, you can see that Pucker Bloat with a black stroke and an orange fill. So I can actually go back and change this from a flower petal into a splat just by changing the effect that's been applied to it. This one doesn't have any effects on it yet, but here's the Effects button. I can click on it and go to Distort and Transform, and this is another fun one called Roughen. Remembering to turn on the preview, we can increase the roughness, but it's pretty easy to go too far, and I really prefer to have a clear pathway around and then have uh, a fill in there that's very easily visible. You can see that you can roughen it, and that will, the detail, it'll make that a little bit sharper. There's a smooth button, but it's doing it to the very ends of these rough points, so it can be kind of hard to see when you've got this much detail. It's also possible to add a second effect. So if I go to the Distort and Transform and add a Pucker and Bloat on top of it, it can do some very interesting things for you. So this one, really, you get a point. It's like a sea urchin. It's taking every rough point and then expanding it out. So a lot of fun to go in there, and then you can play around with it after the fact. Once again, that's the Appearance panel. I have noticed a lot of people losing some of their panels. They're all here under Window. So if you accidentally close the Properties one, and it's not over here, you can open up whatever you need to on this side.